Today, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. What is going on, everyone? Today, I'm going to be doing two Blink the LED projects, one using an Arduino Uno and the other using an F2849C microcontroller from Texas Instruments. This video is a part of a new series I'm doing where I will be showing you how to go from using beginner level electronic components to using components that you might see on a professionally designed circuit board. So before we dive into the project, let's go over some important background information to further explain what exactly we are doing in this video. Whenever you hear the term microcontroller, what that is referring to is the actual integrated circuit that is on the device not the entire device itself. So for example, the F2849C is the name of the microcontroller we will be using, and it has been conveniently placed onto this evaluation board from TI so that we can get some practice at using it. The idea here is that once we have learned how to use this microcontroller, we can put it on any PCB we want and it will work the exact same way. So hopefully that makes sense to you. If you have any questions about this part, please be sure to leave them in the comment section below and I will be sure to respond to you. So let's take a look at all of the hardware we will be using for today's project. As I mentioned before, the beginner level part of this video will be using an Arduino Uno, which uses a simple USB type A connector for power and communication with the PC. And for our professional setup, we will be using the PMD SCN CD 2849C evaluation board from TI, which has the 2849C microcontroller on it. On professionally designed circuit boards, they usually have power and communication broken up into two separate connections. This is because we usually are powering other circuits besides the microcontroller, so it makes sense to have a dedicated power supply connection. To power the evaluation board, we will be using a mini USB cable. Then, to program the F2849C, we will be using the XDS200 USB debug probe. Connecting the Arduino to the PC is very simple. Just plug one end into the Arduino USB Type A receptacle and the other into the PC. For the F2849C, there are a few additional steps we must follow. Firstly, locate the connector for the XDS200 USB emulator on the board. In this case, it is the header pin connector labeled J2. This is the most common emulator connector that is used in modern electronics, so you have probably seen it on many other circuit boards. One thing to note is how there is one pin missing from the J2 connector. This is a technique known as keying, and it ensures that we cannot plug our emulator in backwards so we will always have a proper connection with our microcontroller. The next thing we need to do is connect power to our microcontroller. That is done by connecting the mini USB to J17 on the evaluation board. Notice how it is labeled power only because it does not have any serial communication lines running up to our microcontroller. For this reason, you can plug the other end of the mini USB cable into your machine and you won't have to worry about any interference with the emulator. Now that we have both boards hooked up, we are ready to start programming them. In electrical engineering, the software that you use to program a microcontroller is called an Integrated Debugging Environment, or IDE for short. The Arduino uses its own proprietary IDE called the Arduino IDE, and Texas Instruments has an IDE for all of its microcontrollers called Code Composer Studio. To get started with a new project in the Arduino IDE, simply go to File, New. This will create a blank sketch that we can immediately start writing code in. We do need to configure the Arduino IDE to work with our Arduino Uno, and to do that, we go to Tools, board, and then select Arduino Uno. We also need to make sure that we select the right communication port that the Arduino Uno is connected to, and to do that, go to Tools, Port, and select the COM port that your Arduino Uno is connected to. Moving over to Code Composer Studio, we must follow a similar process to configure our IDE. The first thing we want to do after we have opened our IDE is to import a blank driver library project. This is one of the many basic projects available in CCS, and it will allow us to program the F2849C to blink the LED. 
Once we have an empty driver library project opened, we need to configure our project to work with our microcontroller. In Code Composer Studio, every project has what is called a target configuration file. This is the equivalent of selecting your board type and COM port in the Arduino IDE. The first thing we need to do is select which connection type we are using. To do that, we click on the drop down menu and scroll down to where we see our emulator, the XDS 200 USB debug probe, and select that option. Next, we need to select which microcontroller we are using. The full name of our microcontroller is the TMS 320F2849C, so we can type that in the search bar and it will filter the results for us. We can quickly test our connection by clicking this test connection button to make sure that our hardware setup is working properly. After a successful test of our connection, we are ready to start writing some code. So let's take a look back to the Arduino IDE so we can see what code we need to write to blink the LED. The first thing that we need to do is initialize our GPIO pin as an output. To do that, go to the setup function and use the pin mode function to configure the GPIO as an output. The next thing we need to do is toggle our GPIO pin on and off at a set interval. To do that, we use the digital write function to write the GPIO high, then the delay function to delay for 1000 milliseconds, and then the digital write function again to write the pin low, and then another delay for 1000 milliseconds. These few lines of code will cause the LED to turn on, wait for about a second, then turn off and wait for another second and then repeat the whole process indefinitely. With all the code written, we are now ready to flash the Arduino and execute our program. To do that, click on the arrow in the top left corner of the IDE and the project will start compiling and uploading onto the Arduino device. Congratulations, we have successfully blinked an LED on the Arduino. Okay, so now let's do the same thing with the F2849C. The process is pretty similar, but there are some additional lines of code that we will need to write to make the whole program work. For starters, we need to make sure we have included the driverlib.h header file and the device.h header file. These header files have important functions and data stored in them that allow our microcontroller to function properly. It is important to note that these header files would also be present in the Arduino IDE. They're just placed in the background in order to simplify the user interface a little bit and make writing code a little bit easier for a beginner. Next, we need to add a few functions to initialize the device and get it ready for operation. Again, these types of functions would be present in the Arduino IDE, but they are placed in the background to simplify the process for a beginner. Then, just like with the Arduino, we will need to initialize our GPIO as an output, and to do that we use the GPIO set direction mode function. Unlike the Arduino IDE, Code Composer Studio does not have a setup and loop functions, so we will have to create our own infinite for loop to run indefinitely. Inside the for loop, we will write some code that is very similar to what we did with the Arduino. We will use the GPIO write pin function to write the GPIO pin high slash low, and then the device delay microseconds function to wait for a specified interval. Now that our code is written, we are ready to flash the microcontroller and execute our program. Continuing with the same pattern, the process for Code Composer Studio is very similar, but there are a few additional steps. For starters, in Code Composer Studio, flashing a microcontroller and executing the program is called debugging, and to execute that process, you will click on the little green bug icon in the top left-hand corner of your screen. This will initiate a build and flash process where, the, where Code Composer Studio will build your project for you and then flash it onto the microcontroller. After that is done, you will see we have a green play button and a red stop button populated in the top left hand corner of our screen. This is because the program, while it has been flashed onto the microcontroller, has not actually began executing. In order to execute the program, you just click on the green play button and the code will start running. Congratulations, you have successfully blinked the LED using a professional setup. So looking back on the whole process with the professional setup, the key theme was that 
It is pretty similar to our like beginner friendly setup. There are just some additional steps and features and options that are not available to simplify the process for a beginner. All of the additional features and options while are great because they allow you to customize your project to optimize it for your application, it can be a little bit overwhelming for a beginner. And that is why the Arduino IDE usually turns those features off. And with that, that pretty much covers everything I wanted to go over in this video. Check out the RGB Engineering Patreon if you want some premium content and additional information on this topic. And thank you so much if you made it to the end of the video, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.